Good evening, everyone. Voiceless has been running this lecture series for 10 years now, with the intention of creating a public forum for learning about developments in animal protection and law, and it wouldn't be possible without the support of our Voiceless community, some of whom are here tonight. I'd like to mention in particular Brian Sherman AM, Dr. Jean Sherman, and of course, Professor Charlie Teo. Thank you as well to the University of Sydney for hosting us this evening, and of course, thank you to everyone who is here tonight for coming along. So as Charlie said, my name is Sarah Margo and I'm the legal counsel at Voiceless. And for those who are unfamiliar with us, Voiceless is a not-for-profit think tank. We were established in 2004 by father and daughter team Brian and Ondine Sherman. And our goal is to raise awareness and alleviate the suffering of animals in factory farms and the commercial kangaroo industry. And it's in these two areas where we see the greatest number of animals suffering. 600 million farmed animals are killed in Australia each year and 90 million kangaroos and wallabies have been killed for commercial purposes over the last 20 to 30 years, which has led to the commercial kangaroo industry being described as the largest slaughter of land-based wildlife on the planet. This disturbing reality aside, our industrial slaughter of farmed animals in Australia is dwarfed when put in comparison to the scale of animal agriculture in the United States. I put to you, however, that this difference in scale should not alleviate any of our concerns, as Australia already ranks amongst the highest in the world for per capita meat consumption. This has grave impacts on the environment, human health, and of course, the millions of animals who can be legally mutilated and confined in unnatural environments for the duration of their lives. Yet, we still continue to consume meat at an exorbitant rate. And to put this into perspective, over the space of 50 years, the average Australian has gone from consuming seven kilograms of chicken meat a year to 42 kilograms today. Shortly, we'll be hearing from the author of Meatonomics, David Robertson Simon, who will talk us through the hidden economic forces behind factory farming. That will be followed by a Q&A session, so please hold on to your questions until the end. And I'll note that the lecture tonight is being recorded, so please only ask questions if you don't mind being filmed. And also please feel free to use our social media handles and hashtags throughout the lecture. I'll preface Dave's talk now with a brief introduction to the Australian context. And it's important to understand that many years of research went into developing his book, and that research is yet to be undertaken in Australia. But while we may not have exact comparable statistics, a lot of the lessons are transferable. So in this way, we should widen our focus to consider the larger themes of metonomics and treat the situation in the US as a cautionary tale. That said, there is one key element of metonomics which is already well documented in Australia, and that's industry undue industry influence over our policy and lawmaking. There's been a proliferation of research on this topic and campaigns to address the problem of industry dominance in our animal welfare governance and I'm sure that many of you here today are well versed in this issue. And the fact is that animal advocates, lawyers, and some political groups have been calling for a variation of an independent office for animal welfare for years. And remarkably, we've just seen a really positive development. The Productivity Commission is an independent advisory body to the Australian government. And recently, it undertook an inquiry into the regulation of agriculture in Australia. In its final report, it made a surprisingly progressive recommendation by recommending the establishment of an Australian Commission for Animal Welfare. This would operate as an independent statutory agency to manage the development of farm animal regulation. And where it gets really interesting is when you consider the reasons of why such an independent body is necessary. The Productivity Commission found that our animal welfare framework is failing as a result of conflicts of interest, undue industry influence in standard setting processes, and a failure to properly consider community expectations about what animal welfare means. This echoes what the animal protection movement has advocated for a very long time, and not surprisingly, industry and government have not responded enthusiastically to this recommendation. So to set the scene, I'll briefly talk to some of those points raised by the Productivity Commission, and firstly starting off with a conflict of interest. So for starters, 
Australia presently lacks any valid form of federal governance or leadership in the animal protection space. Since 2013, when Tony Abbott and the Coalition came to power, the Commonwealth has ceased funding for the Australian Animal Welfare Strategy, disbanded its advisory committee, disbanded the Animal Welfare Subdivision within the Department of Agriculture, and ceased uh, and discontinued an animal welfare program for live export. In effect, the coalition government has terminated every animal welfare initiative at a federal level. Instead, responsibility for animal protection is delegated to the Department of Agriculture. Now this department is responsible for maximizing the, product, the productivity and profit of agricultural industries. So a real or perceived conflict of interest arises when you consider that it is also responsible for animal welfare. And we know that animal welfare and productivity don't go hand in hand. A hen who has spent her entire life in a battery cage will continue to produce eggs. And the legality of sow stalls for mother pigs, battery cages for laying hens, and the fact that the live export industry continues today despite repeat investigations showing atrocious cruelty are all good examples of policy decisions where profitability has outweighed even the most basic animal welfare considerations. And this conflict is compounded by the fact that industry has disproportionate influence over our animal welfare standard setting process. And this is particularly evident when we look at the science that is used to inform these animal welfare, these animal welfare standards. So substantial funds are allocated to animal welfare science and research, and they're given to groups called Statutory Research and Development Corporations, or RDCs. The major RDCs, or in other words, those who are responsible for providing us with our animal welfare science, include Meat and Livestock Australia, Dairy Australia, Australian Egg Corporation Limited, Australian Pork Limited, and so on. You can see how this might undermine the credibility of the research. This research is then used to form the basis of our animal welfare standards, which means that our current framework for farmed animals is prepared by industry for industry with the use of industry commissioned or funded science. One example of this, which is quite topical at the moment, is the review of the current poultry code, which dictates how chickens, ducks, turkeys and other birds can legally be treated in farms ranging from free range to intensive. And you may have heard about this in the news. So last year, the Poultry Code finally came under review for the first time in 15 years. And when we look at the key players involved in the review, we can see that there's disproportionate industry influence. The review is managed by Animal Health Australia, which is an industry government partnership, and it's assisted by various drafting and advisory bodies. Of the main advisory body, there are 35 stakeholders, three of which represent animal protection institutes, and most of the remaining 32 represent government and industry inter interests. With these groups setting priorities and determining which standards will be put forward to eventually become law, there's cause for concern that the new poultry code will not significantly improve the lives of hens in Australia, and it probably won't address key issues like the continued use of battery cages, maceration of male chicks, or de-beaking. One way to ensure that animal welfare isn't sidelined would be for this kind of process and review to be managed by an independent body, something like that recommended by the Productivity Commission. We have a lot of information on these kinds of independent bodies on our website. If you're interested, you can continue to read more. And if you're interested in learning more about these issues, in particular, those welfare issues which affect hens, I encourage you to keep an eye out for our upcoming report, which is on the egg industry and will be released shortly. There's a briefing available already, which you may have picked up on your way in. And I'll also note that the poultry code is still under review and will be open for public consultation. And watch this space to see how you can have your say. And it's very important that all concerned about hen welfare do so. So I hope that set a brief Australian context for some of the ideas we're about to explore from our, with our guest speaker. David Robinson Simon is a lawyer and advocate for sustainable consumption. His book, Metonomics, 
looks at the ways meat and dairy producers manipulate consumers to consume significantly more animal foods than they would otherwise. David received his undergraduate degree from the University of California at Berkeley and his law degree from the University of Southern California. In addition to his day job as general counsel for a healthcare company, David is on the advisory council of the Animal Legal Defense Fund, is a director of the Animal Protection and Rescue League, and maintains an active caseload against animal abusers around the US, including lawsuits challenging foie gras producers in New York, ritual animal killers in Southern California, and the US Coast Guard's shooting of cormorants in the Pacific Northwest. He's also brought more than 20 lawsuits successfully challenging restrictive rules for free speech imposed on animal activists at dozens of venues in California. We are honored to have him here, so please join me in welcoming David Robinson Simon. Thank you. 